Max and I just saw Mad God. Oh my God. Yeah. Finally, after all this time, we've been meaning to see it uh, since we saw the trailer. Oh my, oh my Mad God. <laughs> Max, you're itching to talk about it. Um, I I love this movie. It was one of my it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Now, um, wow, easily. Uh, it was so interesting and different. Um, which is interesting because I feel like it was only maybe a year ago that I saw Barry Lyndon for oh, the first time. Right, and I loved that movie so much I had to put it in like my top twenty five or fifty. You know, mm. so. Um, Oh, oh Freddy. our cat wants to see this. Freddy. <laughs> our cat wants to be part of the podcast. Well, um, yeah, she's she's going to stick around, it looks like. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess the easiest way to describe Mad God as someone who um, is wondering what it's like, I would say it's kind of like, um, it reminded me a little bit of The Holy Mountain. Yeah. Um, only it's all stop animation, obviously. Um, it's like 80% stop animation. Yeah, there's tiny bits of live action and, and other forms of animation in it. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like Nightmare Before Christmas, Alejandro Yurinovsky, right? Yurinovsky, yeah, yeah, yeah. pardon me. It's okay. Um, I think I think Freddy's gonna continue to meow unless we pet her. I think Our we're cat's gonna, saying hi. I think we're gonna have to pet her. Maybe she, yeah. uh, maybe she snuck in and was watching Mad God with us, and now she's having nightmares. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was incredible, and I, I loved it. Uh, what did you think, Elliot? Um, I don't know if you liked it quite as much, but you clearly did enjoy it. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I was uh, happy with a lot of it. The first time I tried to watch it, I tried to watch it on a laptop. Uh, mm -hmm. Like a 12 inch by 12 inch laptop, mm -hmm. which is not the way to see this movie. Definitely you want to see it either on a big screen TV like we did at like 1080p. It, it really, it's one of those movies where there's so many movies and just stuff you can watch that is at 1080p, but you're watching it like on your phone or on a laptop. And this, I will say, is is what I really liked about it is it's a movie that it that demands a large picture. Mm, you really yeah. can't watch it on your phone. You will not get it. I couldn't even finish it on my laptop. I watched like the first fifteen minutes of it. I was like, well, this is kind of interesting, and I I liked it. I liked the very first frame. Moving on, it's got a stellar um, like first five minutes and then it kind of dives into this uh, sort of like a adventure um that's very much uh, uh, retrieves like dante in the inferno it's yeah because the main character or not even the main character but the first character you're introduced to is descending and descending and things kind of get more and more horrible for this and that's kind of like the first act of the film is following this first kind of explorer. Yeah, for kind of review purposes to someone listening, I would say um, the movie might require slightly more patience than um, some casual audience members are used to. In the very beginning, you might think that this movie is just going to be a bunch of themes and there isn't going to be a plot, but as it goes on, things do start to add up. Yeah. Um, so if you're watching it in the beginning and, you know, there's dissenting and dissenting and dissenting, and you're not used to watching these kinds of movies. Um, you know, hold on, because mm. things do take twists, as it were, I would say. Oh. Um, it's still not a regular type of structured movie in the in the classic narrative sense that, you know... There's um, no dialogue. Yeah, there's no dialogue, for one thing. There's no dialogue in the whole movie. Um, which I liked a lot. Right. Um, another... One thing I, I want to say that I loved about it was... Um, uh, every single shot felt like a completely different set. That's um, the other thing. Every shot is like a new little strange location, is a new uh, a new idea is being explored mm. within the, you know... The grand the, idea. The details yeah. of this kind of hellscape. Um, and the whole thing is hellish. But the other thing is that you said it might require a more patient viewer... It won't require that if you... I mean, one of the things where I kind of dif disagree with you there mm -hmm. is that the whole thing is, is animation, largely. And so if you have any interest in animation, and even if you don't have interest in animation, you end up really appreciating just 
all the stuff. That's actually a really good point. That's going on. Yeah, every and, moment is gripping. Um, yeah. And it's completely adult. Even if you don't know what's going on necessarily, yeah, like, you're still gripped. You're still it. just charged by just the seeing real, really well done. Because the mm -hmm. thing is, is that, you know, um, hand-drawn animation is basically dead. I mean, people do use, uh, you know, like uh, digital... In the West, yeah. I mean, no, people use, like, digital tablets now to do all kinds of animation. All animation's done, like, on digital tablets. Mm -hmm. You know, people are not, like, drawing on pieces of paper unless they're doing storyboards. Okay. And even then, storyboards are usually digital mm -hmm. these days. And to see, like, uh, you know, stop animation that's so intricate... And um, the sets, which are complicated It's sets. the best stop animation you've ever seen in it's your life. It's probably the best stop animation I've ever seen. I will yeah. say that. It's probably the best. And, and, go into and like, most creative use. And most it. creative yeah. use in a lot of ways. There is a lot of sequences. You know, you know, you and I having filmmaking backgrounds. There is a lot of sequences where I was like, these are, I'm not sure how this is done. I know this is a very complicated composite shot. A lot of them are complicated composite shots. Mm -hmm. But even then, I was like, I, I don't even know. I'm having so much hard, having such a hard time figuring out, like, how is the camera working? How is the lighting working? Yeah. Um, the sound design is excellent. Um, yeah. So, so, from a filmmaking point of view, it was really nice to see a work where I'm like, I'm not really sure how this was done. Yeah, that's the thing. The visuals by themselves are stunning, and then the miracle of how was this achieved is equally stunning. Mm. So you're seeing an image, and you're like, this is mesmerizing and unbelievable, and then you're also forced to remember that none of this is being generated with ease by a computer, that right. this is all like just the highest level of stop animation and movie special effects mastery going on in front of you. And yeah, I mean, um, it's one of the few films where I don't want to know how it was made. Like probably one of the only movies. Yeah. In fact, uh, Elliot and I were about to watch, uh, we watched an interview with the director right afterwards. Uh, he seems like a really interesting yeah, guy. Phil Tippett. So we wanted to click another one and it was a behind the scenes and they started showing like the puppets a couple and of stuff. Models, yeah. And I immediately was like, no, 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 yeah, no. no, I don't want to see it. I can't. And see. I'm right there with you. I don't want to see it. Yeah. You do not want to see how this was made because it's yeah. so like magic in a bottle that, yeah. um, as much as I'm curious as a, as a fan of movies mm. um it's um you know it's just you don't want to spoil it yeah and, uh, <laughs> it's, it's very similar to the only other movie i can think of where i don't want to know the behind the scenes is um who framed roger rabbit every time i right. see like one scene where it they breaks show, your heart it totally yeah, yeah yeah and then as you saw how they did the octopus waiter one time I, yeah i, like, I oh, never i know no, 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 i don't want to no, know it's the only know. other movie I, actually it's the only one the one i can think of it's the only other movie where i don't want to know all the effects and and as a filmmaker you know and a film enthusiast i want to know everything all the time you know it, this it, i don't want to know anything the one other thing i can't watch is behind the scenes stuff of mystery science theater because as soon as yeah they, i guess that's true as soon as they pan to the side or the puppeteers come up i'm like no no, no i don't want to yeah that. those are the uh, don't the, break the illusion those are the other ones but so in that it, it's a really high achievement um uh because it's got some a, a small amount of like live action i think it's i told this to maxwell is i think it takes it it might take it out of the running for an Oscar nomination for Best Animated Film, which is a real tragedy because it totally deserves the Oscar for the Best Animated Movie. So the animated category is very stringent on how much live action is allowed to well, be in an animated well, film there is, there is, uh, there is another film um, that uh, Robin and I just saw, Spur Loose, uh, mm -hmm. The Vanishing, mm -hmm. and um, it was going to get something like the Best um, uh, French Film at a film festival, but it also has like so much German in it that it disqualified it. <laughs> or, or Swedish, or Swedish or something. Well, I don't think, I, if, if there is a stringent rule, I would imagine that they would bend it for this film because Maybe. It's, it's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. It's certainly one of the best um, pieces of uh, animation and definitely the best stop animation work I'd seen. It really retrieves stuff from, you know, like uh, the Argonauts and all the monsters in the Argonauts, you mm -hmm. know? And that kind of thing. Um, it's extremely adult. There's like monsters shitting. Oh, like Harry Housen, you mean? Yeah, 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 exactly. But there's like the monsters in this, they're like shitting and fucking and masturbating and killing each other. 
And it's got a, in the interview, Phil Tippett mentioned that he, when he was a kid, his father, who was an artist, uh, he had a book of uh, Bruegel and Hieronymus Bosch. And this is very much like Hieronymus Bosch meets um, Odd World. The only other thing oh, I can yeah. compare it to really is that game Odd World, which is an <laughs> equally misanthropic industrial yeah. meat being destroyed. They're slaves. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's you're, a hellscape. You're walking through a giant machine in which beings are enslaved uh, to do the labor of turning themselves into food for the machine in order to right. create more... Li yeah, it's and this... they do it unconsciously. They don't realize that that's what they're involved in. Right. Yeah, and it's like they're eating them, their own self. So the only thing I could compare it to in terms of actually like a... Because, you know, the, the, the immediate urge is to compare it to Nightmare Before Christmas. But Nightmare Before Christmas looks amateur compared to <laughs> what this movie does. Well, there's no reason to be mean to Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, yes, oh never. I it, love that it, movie. It is the first thing that comes to mind in comparison. I suppose that goes to show, you know, there's a lot of people who really love stop animation and bemoan the fact that it is, you know, kind of a dying art form. Hopefully this will bring it back um, because when people can see something this amazing being mm. created with it, you know, mm. it could spark some more interests with, uh, with it. But, um, yeah, I think that just goes to show you how starved we are for, you know, really exceptional art in this particular in, in stop animation, mm -hmm. because all you can think of really is Nightmare Before Christmas, which is, you know, a lovely film, but it's for kids. And it's for uh, kids. And you're trying to and you're trying to and, talk and you're trying to talk about Mad God. Right, right, right. And, <laughs> and yeah, yeah. And there's really no comparing the two. Except and, all and, the monsters. Except there's except the, like there's the lots monsters, of monsters. But <laughs> the monsters are like cartoony. Oh, okay. in Nightmare Before Christmas. I know, I'm these, joking. I'm these, joking. These, yeah. these, these like, creatures are These unreal. creatures are all suffering. Yeah. They're all, like, really, really gross. Yeah, I won't go They're on... They're shitting, they're pissing, I, they're fucking... I won't go on a tangent with this, um, because I know you're not as familiar with it, but it was also, yeah, very Dark Souls-like, where every creature is suffering, it's an ecosystem of suffering, it's not just post-apocalyptic, it's a world that refuses to die and should have a long time ago. Yeah, that's this world, too. There is a theme without, I mean, we, we I think we're going to move a bit into spoilers here as we talk about the plot. Should we? Um, I guess, yeah. go ahead, well, sure. We've, we've gone 12 yeah, minutes yeah, appraising it. Yeah, know. so, yeah, spoilers for Mad God. Uh, yeah, uh, there's, uh, uh, one of the characters in this universe, or actually you could say, like, a force in this universe is interested in blowing everything up. Yeah. Um, and, Which um, it should, yeah. Right, and there's this, it, it's obvious that, like, it's, this group has tried many, many times, these individuals all dress the same, they have, like, a, they have, like, a singular identity, and goal, which is to blow up this filthy, horrible world. Yeah. But they keep getting stopped before they can complete their goal. Um, yeah. Again, not going to go on a tangent about it, but anyone who's familiar with Dark Souls would be like, wow, this is... So yeah, if you're a fan of that, this movie would also really speak to you. Um, yeah, as far as the themes go, I just loved it. I was so transfixed by the ending, especially. After, after you go on this long, sort of painful, obscene journey, I feel like the ending did kind of have, uh, you know, a silver lining with a touch of gray to it, you know, uh, even <laughs> the only silver lining in, um, Mad God is still pretty, pretty harsh to look at, I feel <laughs> like, but I don't know, that could just be my interpretation of the ending, but yeah, I found the film not just like, wow, this is visually amazing, wow, this is technically amazing, wow, this is freaky, um, it, it actually really resonated with me as a work of art, um, about, like, Mm, dystopia and uh and death and um yeah uh, again spoilers spoilers um that ending with with the witch um when she sort of casts the silver ashes and we see this strange vision you know um like a new universe being born yeah you could say it wasn't really positive because there's the image of these um uh, obelisks being lobbed into space and each planet they land on it's implied as another mad god type world you know mm. so maybe it's uh, I, but i don't know something about it uh just really resonated the part with the candles and time kind of reactivating after this very long limbo of a world i don't know i need to watch it again but um 
something about it really resonated with me, not just as a super visually impressive um, spectacle, but um, yeah, as a work of art, I, I loved it. It really spoke to me on, for some reason. And it's Well, I think that's because it's also a spiritual work. It's not just obviously like a labor of love. It is a it is a it is a work that deals with um, uh, themes about the universe that often strike one during like a psychedelic trip. Mm. There is this kind of endless process of of creation, and uh, what makes the what makes creation um, uh, misanthropic is the beings in this uh, in these universes sort of uh, both creating each other, creating themselves, and at the same time putting each other through immense forms of suffering. It's very much like, you know, it is, it is, it's really a meditation on the universe as hell, um, hence the mad god, I think. Um, and it, even the first image is this Tower of Babel like image. That first image. That first image is a fucking great way to start a movie. <laughs> yeah, because you know going in you're gonna see something visually impressive, and that first image with that unreal cloud oh, yeah. and that tower looking so classic. And I mean, yeah, I was like hooked from that first image. I was like, oh my god, this is something different. Yeah, and it's a movie that does it that is, you know, it's it's over an hour long and it's got no dialogue and it doesn't need any. In it, fact, I was worried about what the first I think the only words in the movie are oh no and mama. Yeah. <laughs> the only words in the whole movie. Yeah, and it being an hour and a half long or plus well, with I wanted it to be like I wanted it to be 6 hours long. I was yeah. so into it. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things that you don't really want it to end and then at the same time when it does end you're just like, "Wow, what a trip." Yeah. It's something that um it's something that's also like absolutely not for kids. Yeah, I would thoroughly agree. Um, you might think that ki kids would enjoy uh, just seeing some stop animation, but the ideas in it are really cruel and horrible. Yeah, and there's, like, puppets masturbating each other. Yeah. There's, like, one brief scene of, like, three prostitutes jerking off a minotaur in an yeah. alleyway while these giant viruses descend and zap people. I think my, uh, yeah, one of my favorite little subplots was the two giants who uh, have the same fate, which is endlessly shoveling shit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they have to do this job because they're both wearing, like, electro collars on their head. And even though they share the same terrible fate, they choose to beat each other up. And the scene ends with the red... Uh, a whole bunch... They finish shoveling the shit, more shit falls down to show their endless Sisyphean shit shoveling. Uh -huh. And uh, the red one kind of b moans, Go! And then he stabs the other one in the eyeball, <laughs> seemingly just for the fun of it. Because that's the only, and I realized, I was like, oh, that's the only joy he can eke out in his existence <laughs> is dominating this other guy who's just as screwed as he is, mm. you know. And, uh, yeah, really interesting themes about, like, some things about capitalism, some things about just life and death. Oh, yeah, a lot of it um, being about, um, the first act particularly being about capitalism mm -hmm. and um and really not just capitalism but toil mm -hmm. a lot of it is about toil the only, yeah. the only other film i can think suicidal of suicidal toil suicidal toil the only other film i can think of that is really that where toil is such a huge theme of it in terms of recent films is the lighthouse there's so many scenes <laughs> of robert pattinson yes. toiling and sure. toiling and um the fr uh, one it's of almost the, not a word anymore. Yeah, if you say it any, yeah, you say it a few more times. It's the, not going to mean anything. The uh, there's one image of this uh, these uh, little um, slave zombies, and they're um, uh, they're cleaning up, they're shoveling up the squish, squished corpses of fellow slave zombies. And then they, they, behind them comes this giant steamroller and crushes them. And so the, uh, the, the, the implication is this, these zombies are constantly like cleaning up the steamrolled corpses of other slave zombies only for it to happen over and over and over again. And it's, a, it's, a, it's one, of the, one of the really powerful images in the movie, I thought. Yeah, and uh, I think... I could be wrong, but I think the bricks they were stacking were made out of 
the dead heaps of them. Yeah, I think that's right. That the, that the labor force was turned into um, big, bricks, big hunks of bricks. Yeah, <laughs> which, <laughs> which so, also crushed people. As which they, also crushed people. Yeah, what was so interesting is that those things had no faces, and yet you felt like so bad for them. Yeah, of all the critters in the movie, you, you probably really feel, feel bad, bad, bad for the faceless zombie workers the most. Yeah, at least the gas mask guys who are working for the long fingernailed god. God, um, he looks like a god. At yeah. least they have some kind of mission and purpose, right? Uh, and some kind of sense yeah, they're, of they're camaraderie. Trying to blow up the whole situation yeah yeah which seems like a good idea with how bad everything is absolutely um the dystopia and the other thing is this everyone throws around the word dystopia these days because <laughs> why not throw that word around sure but when you think about you know great visions of dystopia in film you know you think of uh you know scenes from metropolis or terminator 2 sure or the first one or uh, Children of Men, probably a more mm. almost, uh, you know, a, a borderline realistic vision of a, of a dystopia. Gattaca, of course, is always brought up. Uh, and then the other two that come to mind are uh, Dark City and The Matrix in mm -hmm. terms of, like, really dystopian, industrialized... Uh, uh, hellscapes where, the, where there is no escape, you know? Sure, equilibrium. Equilibrium. <laughs> so, of yeah, course, 1984. Right. So, yeah, a lot of 1984. This one is probably the most um, nightmarish vision of a dystopia I've ever seen on, mm -hmm. on film and also the most effective. And um, it's interesting that Tippett brought up um, Hieronymus Bosch because the entire thing is very much like... It's like if Hieronymus Bosch met a Nine Inch Nails music video. <laughs> it's basically what this movie is. It's Hieronymus Bosch with Nine Inch Nails. And I couldn't be happier about the conjunction of those two themes. I'm also realizing that, you know, so much of it was a hellscape, but uh, he manages to cover a lot of bases. There's the World War II type hellscape. Right. There's surgical hellscape. There's surgical hell. There's industrial hellscape. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so he covers more than one type. Yeah, there's uh, even like a terrarium where little right. beings are eating other little beings. That was actually one of the best parts because it was the first time we saw something pretty. Yeah, with some color. And you were like, oh, there's something pretty yeah, here. Yeah, it almost looked like avatar -ish. And then you realize, oh, no, this is just, a, it's just to cultivate things to get eaten yet, yeah. a, yet again. Yeah. Um, but I think that the whole point of that segment with the hunchback creature mm. was to set us up for, um the ending so like uh, those creatures seem to have created a little niche for themselves right and um yeah so they seem to have some kind of slack in this universe where they can have terrariums and you know he was cleaning up his workshop yeah he looked through that thing and he could actually see the atomic blast that that made the world the way it, it is now right and, um yeah, I just love a film that is uh, so excessive with the nuclear bombs and the smoke and the fire and the yeah, it just went there. It just went there. It did it was <laughs> yeah? It it goes there. It's very much a dream. It's very much mm. a fe it's a fever dream. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if it ever plays again in a film theater, um, I will totally go to see it on an even bigger screen. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, those are the those are the big points. Mad God. If you've got a projector or a big screen TV, that's really the only way to watch this movie. It can't be watched on a laptop, yeah. and it's got to be seen in high quality. And I don't say that about a lot of movies. A lot of movies, I'm like, mm. and TV, because I've been watching a lot of TV. Sure. Just like, you could just put that on a... You can just put that on a on a fucking laptop and you'll yeah. get the idea. <laughs> I remember there was a part, uh, maybe half an hour into the film, I'm not sure, um, when the little gas mask guy was in, in a little car and he was driving over rubble. Yeah. And he's just driving over rubble and driving over rubble. And in the middle of the driving over rubble sequence, I was like, yeah, <laughs> this is great. Like, <laughs> just watching him drive over rubble is amazing. This movie... <laughs> He's going around this this square this square pit that's like a it's like a downward spiral only it's you know it's a rectangular it's squared off so he just keeps going around this rim that gets tighter and deeper and deeper and you're just watching him go and there's something just so mesmerizing and fun. Yeah, I don't think they follow up with what movie. happened to that guy. 
I don't um, remember what his fate was. I'm pretty sure that... Um, um, uh, that's a good question. Yeah, that's the only part that I think is, like, the only loose end that's not wrapped up is what happens to our second cast mask hero. I think he was the first, actually, or... No, they look different. That's they're, they're, true. They're, their outfits were different. But it did cut back as if they were watching that on the screen, the second it guy. It did cut back as if they were watching that. Yeah, and that, that whole surgery sequence was pretty incredible. Oh my god, that surgery sequence? I've never seen anything like that. That was pretty wonderful. Some things go, they sure do go on. Uh, and you're yeah, like, that's wow. probably the longest, that's probably the sequence from that like, feels oh, the longest. Yeah, that feels like the longest It may sequence. have only been one and a half minutes, but it <laughs> felt like 14 minutes. It just went on and on. <laughs> and they're just, they're just pulling up this guy's guts and oh. dropping it on the floor. <laughs> And it's filled with, like, jewels and rings and money and yeah, change. Yeah, first it's guts, then it's change and stuff, then it's books. Yeah, and it's just like, And then oh. it's, like, pieces of equipment. Yeah, and then like, finally, <laughs> the weird <laughs> baby. Weird baby. Yeah. And this is like, oh my god, this goes on. Yeah, I think it was just one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. It was the closest thing to watching, like, a dream, um... It was just one of the best things I've ever experienced. I really loved it. I would definitely watch it again. I would definitely recommend it. It's. Uh, I wish there was less live action, if I'm totally honest. I wish there was less live action. Sure. The live action is the only thing that actually kind of took me out. I would agree. Th those were the, the moments that I was taken out, probably. Um, yeah. I feel like if they were going to do live action, that guy's fingernails should have been a grosser color. They're kind of like, yeah, per they're like perfectly, perfectly white. white, which makes them kind of just look like plastic. And I assumed <laughs> that that actor was Phil Tippett and I was shocked when it wasn't Phil Tippett because <laughs> I didn't know what Phil Tippett looked like, but I just assumed he was like an old guy. And that he would be the and mad he god. Would be, he would be like, yeah, I mean, we assume that that's the mad god and, you know, it kind of looks like he should be the mad god one way or another. Well, yeah, maybe he is, maybe he isn't, maybe the universe that, maybe the black hole that's throwing um you know um uh, obelisks out into space um, yeah or monoliths i'm monoliths, sorry yeah, yeah monoliths out and maybe that's just the mad god you know um, hard to say what the mad god is i i assumed it was the guy in red and i assumed that was actually phil tippett he looked the part <laughs> he looked the part of a mad god <laughs> he did and he looked like he was trying to destroy his sinful creation. Yeah, you know, when you watch the but failing. when you watch the Terminator, you're waiting for the Terminator to show up. So you watch <laughs> Mad God, you're like, when's the Mad God gonna show up? Um, but yeah, highly recommend. It should be seen, but mm. it should only be seen on a big screen, or at least like a, a decent a decent television, a decent projector, you it, and in the dark. And this this is a movie where, you know, um, Max usually lights up when he's watching a movie. He didn't, like, light up until the end of it. He was so transfixed. Yeah. <laughs> he's um, just watching it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I gotta say, I found the ending genuinely emotionally impactful. And, uh, yeah, not just a great spectacle. A really good piece of art. Truly not just a great... We're, we're so much, in terms of animation these days, is just writing on the fact that, like, oh, it's so spectacular... Like, what's coming out next? What's the big animated film coming out next? Avatar 2. Oh, God. This, like, you compare a movie like Mad God huh. to, to, to huh. Avatar 2 and just imagine, you know, and they're both almost saying a similar thing. Well, you know, that's so funny, actually, because both do have a similar ethos in the sense that they're like, hey, industrialization and alienation from nature and things like this are probably not so good. But Avatar does it in, like, the dumbest Saturday morning kids cartoon <laughs> way possible. And Phil Tippett does it in a way where he r reaches into your guts and rips out all the coins and change that you've got hidden up in there, you know? Like, it's, it's brutal the way this movie explores those ideas, you know? And then Avatar, oh my god. <laughs> the Smurfs lost their big tree. You know? Colonel, I'm a bad guy, you know? Who looks like the toy from Small Soldiers, you know? Yeah, uh, the Tommy Lee Jones toy. Oh, yeah, what a what a fascinating character, you know? Oh, forget about it. Yeah, so if you want to see a really good... Uh, this, is a, this is definitely... Um, I would say Max gives this an A+. Plus. I would give it about... Uh, Max probably gives it 100... I give it like a strong 93, 94, high endorsement. Um, 
uh, check it out. Yeah, um, like they say in the movie, uh, oh no, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only quote from the film that you can ever quote. So Mama! <laughs>